Hey everyone and welcome back to Prefusion. I'm Anish and today we'll be starting the lecture 2B of linear algebra. So uh, like previous lecture, this is basically the continuation of the previous lecture, lecture 2. Basically we couldn't finish all the topics there. We missed out on two topics that is the addition and multiplication of matrices, also the types of different matrices and uh, with with along with this two, we'll do the questions, few questions on this, uh, whatever we have learned and also we'll do the simultaneous operation of matrices which are valid operations so that the determinants uh, determinant should remain same it should not change so we will understand that what are the different simultaneous operation we can apply on matrices so first let's understand the addition of matrices so here uh, our first thing is which are the possible cases in which we can add the matrices that is one thing also here m can like m m and n there can be any relation between the m and n there is isn't any boundation between them what do i mean by them so m doesn't have to be equal to n for the addition to occur or uh, what can happen is m can also be equals to n also okay anything is fine here anything is fine here there is no boundation on m and n. what are m and n m is the number of rows of this a or m cross n is the order we can say m cross a uh, sorry m cross n is order basically or uh, like this number right m m is this order for this and m is order for this but here n and m are changing so i i can't generalize the case but i hope you are understanding the case m for this is number of rows m for this, this is number of rows m n for this in this case it becomes number of rows n for this in this case becomes number of rows i hope you understand that uh, like m and n can be equal or not equal doesn't matter okay uh, so which are valid over here this is a valid thing this is a valid okay valid operation so this addition is valid okay again is this valid this addition is again valid okay and this isn't valid this isn't valid why is this not valid not valid why is this not valid so basically the order of both the matrices should be same for addition for proper addition of matrices basically i should write here order of both the matrices should be same for proper addition proper proper addition okay for proper addition so this is the first thing next uh, we'll obviously do the property so we learned what is what are valid and what are not valid basically this is not valid because here order of both the matrices a and b are different it is m cross n and this is n cross m which is not possible like let's just take an example right let's just take an example here let's take an example of m equals to 1 and n equals to 2 So whoever know all this stuff, right? These are just basic things. You can directly skip through this. Directly to x this or you can skip this because this is very basic things. So m equals to 1 and n equals to 2. Okay. So now uh, here if m uh, equals to 1. So what does my a become? a becomes 1 row and 2 columns. So it will be a11 and a12. And b also will be something like this. b11 and b12 which is fine the addition will be a11 plus b11 and a12 plus b12 okay so this will be the addition now just hold on a second let me check if everything is recording or not it's, yeah everything is recording fine this 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 fine so yeah this is fine this first case is okay let's do the second case so what was second case second case was okay where did i go second case was this n cross n where both both of them are same so n cross n 
टू क्रॉस टू इट विल बी हेयर वन क्रॉस टू वन क्रॉस टू एंड द रेजल्टेंट विल ऑल्सो भी वन क्रॉस टू ओके दे विल भी सेम रेजल्टेंट ऑर्डर विल भी सेम अगेन हेयर टू क्रॉस टू सो दिस इज ए वन वन ए वन टू ए टू वन ए टू टू प्लस बी वन वन बी वन टू बी टू वन बी टू टू सो हेयर द एडिशन विल बी ए वन वन प्लस बी वन वन सो ए वन वन प्लस बी वन वन देन ए वन टू प्लस बी वन टू ईच ऑफ द एलिमेंट्स विल गेट एडिट ए टू वन प्लस बी टू वन बी टू टू प्लस ए टू टू ए टू टू प्लस बी टू टू ओके सो दीज आर थिंग्स लाइक नाउ लेट्स सॉल्व फॉर द थर्ड केस सो फॉर द थर्ड केस दिस इज एम एम क्रॉस एन सो अगेन दिस इज ओनली दिस ओनली ए वन टू एंड ए ए वन वन एंड ए वन टू प्लस वन क्रॉस टू सो दिस बिकम्स वन क्रॉस टू सो दिस विल बी ए वन वन एंड बी टू वन ओके नो कैन वी एड दिस बेसिकली this element has this b11 fine but this position is not here right not present here or here this is somewhere down so we can't we can't add this we can't add these are not like okay these are not like so we can't add them so yeah this is the first thing so i hope you got through the example now let's uh, understand few properties of addition properties of addition so basically uh, the addition of matrices is commutative in nature so basically if you do a plus b or b plus a if you if you interchange these two things it won't matter here i am doing this plus this and if i do b11 plus uh, a12 a11 they are same only because it doesn't matter it doesn't matter so it follows commutative property it follows associative property what does associative mean basically we distribute few things basically a plus b i do first then i add c or i add b plus c and then i add a same thing same thing only it doesn't matter okay it doesn't matter so it follows associative so these things you should know and what is next next is a minus b now obviously in vector uh, subtraction what do what do we used to do we used to uh, say that we are adding a opposite vector we are adding a opposite vector so basically if you have to subtract something we make take the subtraction sign sign inside the b so this sub subtraction sign is inside b so a plus minus b basically just like a vector uh, subtraction only i i hope you got got that point then this thing right what does this mean if a plus b equals to a plus c that means what that means my b is equals to c okay very important property my b is equals to c basically i can cancel a on both sides just simple addition let's just like simple addition so addition is always simple but multiplication and division the things get complex okay b equals to c now uh, what is the another property another property is if i have a, a matrix which i write as the addition of two matrices x plus y then i can say one thing what can you say like students get confused with this they write that determinant of this z will be equal to determinant of x plus determinant of y which is not true at all not true may not be the case what is the case the case is this you have to remember this is very important determinant of z will be less than equals to determinant of x plus determinant of y okay so this is true always always true this is always true always true okay so uh basically how can you remember this so this is like basic thing i have to remember this so how can you remember this if like we have to like the relationship is like this then it has to follow this it has to follow this the determinant rule has to follow this okay one thing if you recall from our like uh childhood okay we have let's say this a vector and this b vector and this is c vector right 
if you recall correctly if you recall correctly the c vector if if i want to know the magnitude of the c vector this will be equals to under root a square uh, a square plus b square plus 2ab uh, cos theta if you if you remember i'm not writing it so i don't have space so i'm not writing it now what do you say say that the about the side inequality rule triangle law what do you say say that this this side right this side magnitude of this side will always be less than magnitude of a plus magnitude of b okay sorry not less sorry sorry i, I made a mistake over here okay no no this is fine yeah so yeah this will be less than this yeah fine this will be less than this how can you say it how can you say it because like the more wider you get right the more wider you get this c becomes more okay c becomes more but it can never be in the parallel straight line if it becomes the parallel straight line then it will just be a straight line itself like what i am trying to say if you extend this right if you extend this b your c increases right your c increases your c increases but it can never become this straight line then only it it will be equal to a, a plus b so c can never be equal to a plus b like it can be just at the h case then it won't be a triangle anymore it won't be a triangle anymore so yeah that's uh, from there we we got this uh, triangle law right i hope you recall these things i hope you recall these things so yeah that was basically it so uh, why did i tell you this just to have a bit bit of uh, like uh, intuition like how to re remember this uh, rule right how to remember this rule you can remember with the help of triangle law triangle inequality you can remember okay so now let's say if i have three matrices if i have three matrices so let's say my uh, d i have a d matrix equals to a plus b plus c okay three matrices now what uh, relationship will they follow they will follow this relationship basically again that relationship is coming to factor so my determinant of d can, uh, can be at this is the determinant sign i hope you understand this is not any magnitude sign so determinant of d can be so like let me just say delta z sorry not delta z this determinant of z equals to determinant of z okay so this is equals to summation of magnitude of a magnitude of b plus magnitude of c a b c okay a b and c determinant of d is this a b c so like this uh, rule you have to like uh, follow so let's uh, solve this basically let's solve this we have a question over here where they are talking about that w is equals to x y plus z okay and it is a matrix and which of the following options is or are is slash r cannot be possible so this is a msq type and they are asking which of of these uh, options are not possible at all okay they have given us the determinant of x is 6 determinant of x is 6 it is constant now what do we have to check we have to check this inequality right whichever follows this inequality will be not our answer because they have told us which are which cannot be possible okay if it is possible obviously it is not our answer so should be less than equals to 6 x6 like is there determinant of y plus determinant of z now let's do one by one so a is 4 so we write 4 over here 4 is less than equals to 6 already 6 is over here so this is correct this is correct already already because like 4 is already less than this 6 itself so this again satisfies whatever is written over here it doesn't matter but obviously if these are negative then things become difficult things become difficult then you have to check so obviously we'll check then so 6 and plus 1 and plus 2 so again uh, this is 9 9 is lower than 4 so this is fine so this is this is satisfying this equation so this is not our answer again 7 7 is less than equals to 6 plus 1 7 okay 7 is less than equal to 7 is this inequality true yes this is true so again this will not be our answer then 10 10 less than equals to 6 plus 3 9 plus 5 14 so 14 is less than 10 uh, 14 is greater than equal to 10 which is correct again so this is again not our answer now coming to this 12 is less than equals to 6 plus 4 which is 10 uh yeah sorry for the interruption so basically where was i in the final option so here 
12 should be less than equals to 6 plus 4 which is 10 plus 1 which is 11 is this correct 12 less than equals to 11 is this inequality correct this is not correct right this is not correct so yeah this is our answer basically so they have told us which is or not not possible so th this basically is not possible obviously we can't say the exact values of determinant but we can uh, like which are not we have to eliminate which are not possible so this is never true this is never possible as uh, we have written the inequality here okay so yeah this is about this question i hope you got the uh, concept of this question so let's go to the next concept that is a multiplication of matrices so here in this case for proper multiplication the number of rows of b should be equal to the number of columns of a what do i mean by that the number of rows of b is this one right number of rows of b is this one okay and number of columns of a is this n so number of rows of b and number of columns of a should both of them be equal so m cross n so th these two things should be equal then only matrix multiplication is possible so here i will write here that i'm assuming that m is not equals to n m is not equals to n if m is not equals to n okay just hold on a second let me come, come back to this thing did i do something wrong okay basically what i should have told you here is i made one one slight mistake is that uh yeah I, like this was if it doesn't matter here if m is equals to n or n, uh, m is not equal to n, that is fine so yeah here what is happening i'm assuming that m is not equals to n that is the first thing if m is not equals to n then what will happen then okay, okay sorry i made a mistake just hold on a second yeah basically i made a mistake over m should not be equals to n because if m is equals to n then this will not hold so sorry for that basically what i meant over here was that m is not equals to n so th these two numbers are not equal okay these are so th that is how i took the example also so yeah that was my like uh, bit of uh, head like head problem like i forgot to uh, tell you that yeah m is not equals to n actually because if m is equals to n then this also will be this also will become valid sorry for that if that uh, caused you some confusion i'm sorry so m is not equals to n here also m is not equals to n okay so if m is not equals to n uh then is this a valid operation is this a valid operation this is this is not not valid not valid why for proper multiplication of matrices the number of rows of b should be equal to the number of columns of a and we have already mentioned that m is not equal to n so m is not equal to n so this is not a valid operation here a and b so here it is just both of them are square matrices n cross n n cross n so is this a valid operation multiplication this is a valid multiplication valid multiplication and the resultant what we'll get is this n cross n we'll understand this the resultant order so here what do i see n and n and then here a and b is, is this valid here what do you see are these two equal you just check the inner inner sizes inner sizes you check they are equal n equals to n which is true so again this is a valid this is valid and what will be the order of the resultant matrix it will be the outer outer orders so m p m cross p so i should write the um, this i should write for valid operation for valid matrix multiplication okay so now order of resultant matrix after matrix multiplication 
okay so what will be the order resultant matrix so basically order resultant matrix i'll just copy this will be equals to the number of rows of a into number of columns of b so just copy this whole thing rows of a number of columns of b okay so this will be the order of my resultant matrix so like the basically outer outer things outer uh, sizes right so let's do a few matrix multiplications so uh, here if i do a cross b and they have given us that c will be so yeah c will be a cross b okay okay we have got two questions okay i forgot to like uh, write the question actually so this will be find for the a a part right find okay, i will just write this over here for the a part this is the a part find a cross b so we will do one matrix multiplication example if you know you can skip this and for c okay for the c part or uh, not not for the b part we have to find x y and z okay so we have to find x y z so basically let's uh, do this first matrix multiplication is this even possible let's see so if i check over here if i copy this so a cross b so let's check the order of this order of this is 3 cross 2 3 rows cos 2 and this is 2 cross 3 and this is fine because if we check the internal uh, numbers they are equal the uh, columns number of columns of a is equals to number of rows of b so how will my matrix multiplication do uh, so basically people tend to forget matrix multiplication okay so please don't please don't so we move along this row okay move along this row and along this columns okay so row into columns basically and we first complete all the row with all the columns then we move to the second row so this will be like this okay then we move start moving from the second row then again we move along all the columns then again we move with the third row and then again we move along all the columns so let me just increase the space of this okay so this will be basically so one times one so it is uh, one only plus okay this will only give us one element then two times two four okay and then we again do like take the same row and we multiply the second column so one times three is three so this is the second element what we are doing and two times four which is eight so if you all know already this you can directly skip this then again we take this row and we multiply one times one or uh, five and two times six so this is 12 and let's come to the third thing so what will be the resultant resultant will be a three cross three matrix because we are taking the outer uh, outer sizes three cross three so c will be 3 cos 3 so 1 plus 4 and then this is 3 cross 1 uh, 3 plus 4 times 2 which is 8 then this is 3 3 9 plus 16 then 15 plus 24 then this is 5 plus 12 then this is 15 plus 24 then this is 25 plus 36 okay so what will be this so this becomes a 3 cross 3 okay now people uh, what they tend to like confuse with is 
they multiply this row this column then again they multiply this row this column like that they get confused don't do that don't do that because we are taking the row of this and column of this so obviously we'll do uh first apply this row in all of the columns then we'll move along okay completing the first row so that's why the first row is applied to all of the columns so first row then the second row is applied to all of the columns basically i hope you get the point so like the resultant you can do the result right i i'm not doing it okay or like let's do do it anyways so okay i am not doing it you do okay few things you should do so this is the a part and what is the b part so b part is telling us to find the x y and z so you can directly see from here or you can directly observe from here what can be my x y and z they have told us that the resultant matrix c is 3 cos 3 so the outer outer uh, numbers will be 3 and 3 like this will be the x and this will be the y so from here you can directly understand that this will be x and this will be y okay let me take this okay so now basically what will be the like why i have got what will be my z that is very important another relation we know for proper matrix multiplication as we know we have got the resultant we have gotten the resultant so for proper matrix multiplication y plus 1 will be equals to z minus 1 y plus 1 equals to z minus 1 so z equals to y plus 2 now what is my y why i have already got it y equals to 3 so from this relationship i have already got uh, that x equals to 3 and y equals to 3 so uh, z equals to y plus 2 so y is 3 so this is 5 so now z is 5 in this case z is 5 in this case okay so uh, z is 5 and y is 3 and x is 3 so this is my answer basically uh, yeah so let's go to few key points so here uh, what key point we see is that c is equals to a m cross n into n cross p where my order of c will be m cross p okay outer 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 orders of the two matrices okay now total number of multiplications of elements required is m cross n cross p so m cross n cross p now like i also don't remember this okay don't worry what do you mean by total number of multiplications by multiplications we mean these right how many multiplications i need so here I do 1 cross 1 then 2 cross 2 then I did 1 cross 3 then 2 cross 4 so how many total multiplication I need that is basically uh, this right that is basically m into n cross p now the total number of addition of elements total number of addition of elements so we can we can like we can count this or what we can do is we can just take a simple example uh, 2 cos 2 matrix 2 cos 2 matrix so if you take it simple 2 cos 2 matrix okay or let me take a 1 cross 2 this time 1 2 and here let me do one thing let me do this this will be easier 2 1 okay so here i am multiplying row into column right 2 cross 1 then again row into column so this is again Okay, I made another mistake, so I was doing the starting correctly. Okay, this I should do. So basically, to make the resultant bit easier, so this is one cross two and two cross one. So what would what will I do? I, I will multiply row into column. So one cross one, then plus two cross one. So here, how many multiplications I require? I require two multiplications. This two multiplications, and how many additions I require? I require only one addition. So here also, what can we observe? What can you observe here? I need I needed two multiplications and only one addition, one addition, okay. And like basically this n thing is the main thing. That's why it is coming over here n minus one. So from here you can basically get an intuition. Obviously that's how you try to remember it. Else like uh, obviously how will you remember? You you can take a simple example and from there you you try to derive the result also. Like if in the question directly this comes up like which uh, how many total number of additions of the elements required? Okay for a matrix multiplication you can simply take some simple example and from there you can derive that which equations are satisfying okay and through that you can eliminate the options so this is what you can do so yeah just i i also don't remember this formula just put it in your short notes and try to like have this in your mind and try to have the analogy how is this coming okay through this so here number of multiplication and 
नंबर ऑफ एंटीशन इज ओनली वन ओके सो या लाइक आई होप यू यू ट्राई टू रिमेम दिस और डोंट वरी इफ यू डोंट लाइक इट डजन कम इन गेट एनी वाइज सो नाउ इफ ए टाइम्स बी इज पॉसिबल देन बी टाइम्स ए मे और मे नॉट बी पॉसिबल वट आई मीन बाई दिस सो अगेन राइट हेयर इफ लेट से आई टेक अनदर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज द फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल एंड दिस इज द सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल so in this second example basically what i can say is my a is let's say 2 cross 1 and b is 1 cross 3 okay so a cross b is possible a times b is possible multiplication of a and b yes it is possible so a and b will be c vector which will be 2 cross 3 now is b cross a possible tell me is b cross a possible it is not possible right it is not possible why because this is 3 this is 2 so basically they are different they are different so inner uh, orders are different so uh, hence they are not possible so that is what this statement is basically saying to us okay so now what are the few properties of multiplication of matrices they are not commutative okay so you just try for yourself you just take one example and you will see that this is not necessarily to sometimes it may come up true okay but most cases this is not necessarily to that a cross b will be equals to b cross a uh, like i will just go a bit fast because these are anyways you know these things now is this associative it is associative what do you mean by that so if i do a cross b then i multiply c or if i do a cross uh, first i do b cross c and then i multiply a it is uh, they will give me the same result but you have to maintain the proper sequence that is important maintain proper sequence mm, let me take a different color maintain okay proper sequence okay what to maintain proper sequence now what about distributive so are are the distributive yes they are distributive so a cross b plus c equals to a cross b plus a cross c a cross b uh plus a cross c okay so yeah the, it is distributive i won't go much into this so basically these are few properties so now basically let's come to the determinant thing so if c is equals to a cross b then what about the relationship between the determinant so i told you the relationship for the addition in determinant case let's do it for multiplication so here there is some sure shot relationship so what is the relationship so basically the determinant of c will be equals to determinant of a times determinant of b okay so let's say i have like a matrix a okay which is equals to a1 now obviously for this uh, like both of them has to be all of them has to be square right all of the matrices for this you satisfy obviously determinant has to exist right all of the matrices have to be square matrices so a1 a2 a3 and a4 and it is ongoing right it is ongoing up until let's say b n okay it's not b n sorry a n so okay like i can name this something else because i'll see you get confused so let let me name this b okay so what will be the determinant of b the determinant of b will be simply the multiplication all of the mass square matrices that is already we are inherently assuming it so determinant of a2 determinant of a3 determinant of a4 
and determinant of a n okay so yeah this you have to like uh, you know right i hope you already know this if you don't know then you know okay so now let's come to the type of matrices so we will just go, uh, go quickly overview this what is row matrix so for a row matrix it will contain only one row as the name suggests and it can have any real numbers or something so uh, and m is equals to one that is the main thing m here will be equals to one and can be any positive integer or it has also has to be greater than one also greater than or equals to one n has to be any positive integer which includes obviously one that's uh, that is fine so which starts from one itself so that is fine so basically what are the key points of this the key points of this is it contains only one row only one row number of rows equals to one and number of columns it can have multiple okay it is also known as a row vector multiple columns okay like a row vector you can also call it row vector like let's take a few examples so it can be one two three or four five six any right or like i can take four five or how many but row must be one row must be one here so again the column matrix same only just the column will be one so in this case number of columns equals to one okay and number of uh, mul there will be multiple rows multiple rows okay and like this is a vector column vector so example like one two three like uh whatever to degree minus one two so like uh, why do we use this and not this as you can see right this is cramping in lesser space so we use column vectors i told you earlier also here it is uh, uh laterally taking more space more space right more space and this is taking lower space okay but uh obviously if the area is same area they cover same but uh like this is more easier like as uh, laterally it is taking lesser space we uh like uh what do you say we prefer this one we prefer this one okay so next uh, is null matrix basically in null matrix all of the elements will be zero it can be anything it can be rectangular okay or square can be rectangular or square okay rectangular or square they can be anything so basically zero and zero comma zero this zero zero okay or four zeros okay can be anything okay so uh, like uh, these are the examples and uh, another thing is that another property is that a cross m cross n into nullity matrix right null matrix n cross any order but these two obviously has to be same obviously number of rows and number of these columns has to be same should always will always be equals to nullity matrix of order m cross p because basically you're multiplying all zeros so it will be only zero only so this also I, I like is self-explanatory i hope you are able to grasp this and another thing is that the determinant of a null matrix matrix will be zero obviously because rows zeros it contains so everything is zero so very simple right determinant of null matrix so how can i write null matrix so n equals to obviously it has to be square right it has to be square n cross n okay so determinant of n will be equals to always zero so just basic properties these are i hope you like, you can like you already know this or you can derive this like just one second nothing fancy here so let's come to the diagonal matrix so what are diagonal matrix basically or uh, whichever elements are in the principal diagonal at least one of them has to be non zero so what what is principal diagonal i will explain but this is the basically uh, literature basically uh, like relationship between the elements and according to the uh, rows and columns so here so basically di diagonal matrix will be always a square matrix will always be square matrix okay it can't be 
a rectangular matrix very important it will be always be a square matrix because for a square only we can talk about the diagonal okay in matrix format else in rectangle the diagonal is like it's not like this so in rectangle a11 what will you see the diagonal here just hold it a second a12 a13 a21 a22 a23 the diagonal should uh, like connect the endpoint side right? but here what can i say the diagonal no diagonal right but for a square it is easier to identify the diagonal that's why uh, like it is only valid for only valid for square matrix okay so um, in this case basically this i equals to j right i equals to j means this means principal diagonal now what is principal diagonal i will tell you principal diagonal elements let me color this differently okay so basically here in this case if i just can i copy a three cos matrix no we shouldn't right we shouldn't like uh, another important thing i forgot to tell you is that all other elements will be zero all other elements will be zero and the diagonal elements principal diagonal elements will be at least one of them should be non zero at least one of them should be non zero d1 d2 d3 and this is 0 0 0 0 0 0 so this is a diagonal element and which is my principal diagonal so this is basically my principal diagonal okay principal diagonal element okay so and also another point i want to tell you is that that this is my off diagonal okay this is my off diagonal so this is my principal diagonal and this is my off diagonal principal diagonal also known as main diagonal okay so uh, this is basically a example of diagonal matrix all of them at least at least one of them d1 d2 d2 d3 out of them at least one of them should be non zero okay at least one of them so uh, like uh, another interesting fact what you can see is can you find the determinant for this the determinant for this is rather simple so this is d okay and the determinant for this is rather simple diagonal of d is simply d1 d2 and d3 okay so this is my determinant of d so this also you like this is also another like type of type of property only okay now like uh, yeah what are elements called so if i have matrix element right a i j and it is a square matrix now if i is less than j basically uh, i am at the ith row which is less than the jth column so it is called as the below principal diagonal so here if i see in this case right so let me uh, number this things so let me take a color if i can yeah let's say 1 2 3 1 2 and 3 so in this case this is a i j a 1 1 and what is this this is a 2 1 so a 2 1 is greater than uh, the column so yeah yeah so uh okay i made a mistake over here oh no no this is fine yeah no actually i made a mistake this should be below the principal diagonal element this should be above the principal diagonal element. yeah i'm 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 correct only so here in this case my uh, what is my row number is greater than my column number i am talking about this element so is this is this below the principal diagonal element or above the principal diagonal element this right this is below the principal diagonal element so this is below the principal diagonal element where my row is greater than the column so this is below the principal diagonal element okay next is uh, this element again my row is greater than the column so this is below the principal diagonal element again now let's come to this here my column second column and my row is 1 so this is above the principal diagonal uh, diagonal above the principal diagonal so here my number of rows 
is lesser than the number of columns. Columns is greater. So that's why this is above principal diagonal and this is below principal diagonal. And when my i is equal to j, basically the column is equal to the number of rows. It's not the number of rows. The uh, column number and the row number are same. Then it is known as the diagonal element, principal diagonal. Okay. Here we can see these are the principal diagonal. One one two two three three. Okay. So these are the principal diagonals. So uh, this is another simple question. So you have to find the determinant of the following matrix. So this is a uh, question on, on the matrix formation. Formation. So here A is given and A i j is given like this. Uh, the relationship is given like this that it will be equals to A i j will be equals to i plus j when i equals to j. So basically this is talking about the diagonal elements and it will be equals to zero when i is not equal to j. So basically it is a diagonal matrix. Okay. And i and j are both varying from one to three. So how what can I write? I have to find the determinant, right? First, I will first obviously for finding the determinant, I have to find the matrix. I have to know the matrix. So the matrix is i plus j when i is equal to j. So basically, i plus j one plus one is two, then two plus two is four, then three plus three is six, and all other elements are zero. All other elements are zero basically. So zero 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 zero. This is three cross three, right? Three cross three. So three cross three. Now, what is the determinant? Basically, this is a diagonal matrix. You can directly do it. It will be the product of the diagonal elements. Two cross four cross three six. So two cross four cross six equals to what? Eight cross six, which is forty eight. Forty eight. Okay. So yeah, this is basically the uh, determinant part. So the determinant of A will be forty eight. So this will be the answer. Okay. So let's move on swiftly. Nothing special here. So let's come to this very important matrix, which is a, which is a identity matrix. So this is a very important matrix, also known as the unit matrix. Unit matrix. Okay. Unit matrix. So uh, basically, uh, it's called an identity matrix where uh, like A is equals to A i j. A is equals to A i j n cross n. So uh, basically, all the diagonal elements will be one, and all the other elements will be zero. Basically, it is a diagonal matrix only with its diagonal elements equals to one. So, like uh, it is always square in nature. And obviously, here I forgot to put on the limits. I is less than n. J is less than n. Okay. So basically. Like this is obviously square, always square. Okay, always square. I two will be something like this. Just the diagonal matrix with the diagonal elements equals to one. So yeah, this is about the identity matrix, and the special fact about identity matrix is if you multiply anything, like the, you have a matrix A right, and you multiply identity matrix with it, you will get. A itself, so it is basically one, like in decimal system, whatever one does, it does, right? Uh, like just uh, analogy, okay? So one times three is three, three one times four is four, so that like just like the same analogy, okay? Also, the determinant of identity matrix of any order will be always equals to one because simply multiplication of the diagonal elements and one times one times one will be one only. So what next? Next is about the scalar matrix. So it is only same as the identity matrix only. Okay, but this time the difference is basically difference is instead of the diagonal elements be uh, being one, they will be some scalar value k. Okay, all of them will be same only, but they will be some scalar value k. Okay. So basically, it is uh, like almost same only, but the difference is there will be some scalar value k. Uh, let me take an example here. Uh, let me take an example. So the determinant of a will be equals to this. Uh, not determinant. Sorry. Let me form the matrix itself. 
मैट्रिक्स ए के के ओ नॉट के के सॉरी के हिज ऑलरेडी टू टू जीरो जीरो ओके एंड लेट मी टेक अनदर मैट्रिक्स माइनस टू माइनस टू जीरो जीरो ओके वी कैन यूज थर्ड ऑर्डर थर्ड ऑर्डर सो माइनस टू जीरो जीरो माइनस टू जीरो 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 माइनस टू ओके सो या दिस इज बेसिकली स्केलर मैट्रिक्स एंड द इंटरेस्टिंग फैक्ट अबाउट स्केलर मैट्रिक्स इज द डिटर्मेंट ऑफ दिस विल बी सिंपली के रेज टू पॉर एन ओके के रेज टू पॉर एन वेरी सिंपल राइट यू जस्ट मल्टीप्लाई द डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स एन टाइम्स बिकॉज देर आर एन डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स बिकॉज द ऑर्डर इज एन क्रॉस एन आई वी गेट इट सो बेसिकली यू फाइन द डिटर्मेंट ऑफ दिस दिस विल बी टू स्क्वायर यू फाइन द डिटर्मेंट ऑफ दिस दिस विल बी माइनस टू होल क्यूब ओके नॉट जस्ट सिंपली टू क्यूब जस्ट मैं बता विल मेक ए मिस्टेक ओवर इट इज माइनस एट so it is four over so just like with the example you can understand right so here i have written few properties of identity matrix so basically i n times i n times i n will always be i n so 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 uh, and a times i n is uh, also equals to i n times a and these two are necessarily not true always but for identity matrix this is always true because a times i n and uh, i n times a both of them are giving the same result that is a itself okay you can proof check for yourself you will get the same result and this is one thing this is the inverse of identity matrix we haven't like learned inverse yet but we will soon learn so inverse of identity matrix it's is the identity matrix matrix itself basically one inverse of one is one itself inverse of two two is half one by two so they are different but inverse of one is one itself that's why uh like in here is one in so the, uh, you can uh, refer to your decimal system one like that you can uh, remember the properties okay now determinant of in is one i already explained that now let's learn about the upper triangular matrix so this will be also a square matrix square matrix let me check how much time we have square matrix okay so this is a square matrix now this is also known as utm utm so a equals to a ij n cross n a equals to a ij n cross n now here at least one should be non zero at least one should be non zero okay uh, what do you mean by at least so basically the uh, i less than equals to j so what was the i less than equals to j i less than equals to j was this a right above the principal di uh, diagonal element so above the principal diagonal the elements at least one should be non zero okay so let me mark this let me write the matrix basically this is a11 a12 a13 00 and a22 a33 a230 okay so basically what will this be so here it is forming a triangle so if we check this thing right i just use some other color it is forming a triangle over here so all of the elements basically upper triangle all of them at least one of them will be non zero that's why it is called a upper triangular matrix okay about triangular so that is the interesting fact that's why it is uh, like uh, it is uh, what what do you say it is named like this upper triangular matrix now i will say another thing another property of upper triangular matrix is that all the elements all the elements below the diagonal element below the diagonal element must be 
zero okay so this is uh, this is like another property of uh, like this upper triangular matrix okay and what is the determinant of this can you tell me the determinant it's again the same as the diagonal matrix only the product of the diagonal elements because you you will see the right you, here you have two zeros and only one uh, one element present non zero so if you multiply this what you will see a11 a22 times a33 minus 0 times this so this one gets reduced and you will be only left with this so a determinant will be a11 A22 and A33, okay, and A33. So, like similar only lower triangular matrix where my i is greater than j. So, where my i is greater than j, obviously, we are talking about the lower uh, below the i is greater than j. So, we are talking about the below the uh, principal diagonal. So, lower that's why it is called as lower triangular matrix. Almost same, everything did talk at same, but the difference is just that it is talking about the lower triangular, not the upper triangular. So I will, I will just copy this thing in all of them are same just the words are interchanged so basically okay so basically this will be the lower triangle okay and again right the determinant will be again same okay and this is called lower triangle because like oh uh, okay <laughs> i have to obviously change the matrix that i forgot <laughs> sorry uh, so yeah this all the elements above this will be 0 only and this will be a21 a31 and a32 okay all the elements above the diagonal element will be 0 okay so yeah a11 a22 a2 uh, yeah this is fine all of them are fine okay so like same definition only again we have another mat uh, like type of matrix name as sub matrix so let's say if i have a matrix uh, matrix A okay which is equals to simply one okay, let me one two three four five six seven eight nine okay now what can be possible sub matrices so possible sub matrices basically it is like a set what can be inside this set so whichever elements are inside this I can take this matrix just for instance 1 2 4 5 then another example can be 2 5 3 6 but they obviously has to have to follow the proper sequence that is very important we can take 4 5 okay but we can't take 8 7 so 8 7 is impossible 8 7 is not possible okay 8 7 is not possible because 8 7 is the order has been interchanged here so that is very important so yeah this is about the sub matrices and uh, like what else what else so basically this also is not possible a order higher than this basically zero zero is, is does it is, is it uh, inside this uh, like matrix no zero is it's not inside the matrix also anything higher than four cross four matrix obviously it can't be a sub matrix of three cross three okay it has to include that so yeah that is one thing and let's uh, talk about the equal matrices so equal matrices means uh, uh, both of the matrices are equal so basically here it can be both rectangular or square matrix square matrix okay and but both must be same so basically what does this mean a is equals to b okay hence this means that a and b are equal 
matrix basically in this case it is uh, m like the order of them have to be obviously same only else like it won't be equal anymore the order of them has to be same so everything is same about them all the elements are same all the elements are same okay so that is what equal matrices means so basically basically aij will be equals to bij okay aij will be equals to bij for all i comma j for all i comma j okay and i i is varying from 1 to n and j is also varying from so not 1 to n this will be m actually i'll change it okay so this is about a comma b okay so yeah these are the few key points so these are the few key points i have already written it down diagonal matrix will always square identity slash scalar matrix will always be square and a and a diagonal matrix like obviously uh, identity matrix is also diagonal matrix okay diagonal and determinant of diagonal utm ltm is product of its diagonal elements so yeah yeah that obviously we have written all those key points right diagonal elements so that is fine now let's uh, like these are few questions what i want to to tell you is like we are already running out of time so what i will do is i will give you this homework okay and like by singular matrix i should write here singular matrix i have already written it in previous case also like singular matrix means singular if the determinant of a matrix is zero then it is called as singular matrix okay so yeah you just uh, try to solve these uh, questions okay and for the simultaneous operations i will try to start in the next uh, lecture and we'll do questions also on that lecture also so yeah i can cover the simultaneous uh, operations so yeah just you have to find the value of x and y if a and b are equal matrices and here also you have to find the value of x if a is a singular matrix and in this case find the determinant of the following matrix a simple determinant you have to find okay and in this you have to like if the determinant of a is 10 then the find the determinant of b okay some relationship you have to find between a and b just don't blindly solve the determinant of a okay if they have given you the determinant of a, a that means they want you to use that information okay and yeah in the next lecture i will start simultaneous operation or matrix and also do a uh, whole lot of questions whole lot of questions on determinants okay so yeah uh, i hope you like this lecture and i will see you in the next lecture thank you for watching